Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. Thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful song. Listen to these words of Scripture. Psalm 71, verse 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In Luke 24, 38, he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in, acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Confusion. Well, let's get literary here. What is it? The dictionary definition of confusion is this. Lack of understanding, uncertainty, there seems to be some confusion about which system does what, or some other words, certainty, unsureness, lack of certainty, unsureness, indecision, hesitation, skepticism, doubt, ignorance, dubiety, uncertainty, a situation of panic, a breakdown of order. Hmm. Well, what has been the wisdom of the ages about certainty? Here are some answers to that question. Isaac Newton, he said, Truth is ever to be found in simplicity, not in the multiplicity and confusion of things. Albert Einstein, he said, I used to go away for weeks in a state of confusion. Yes, Francis Bacon said, Truth emerges more readily from error than from confusion. And then a young lady by the name of Anna Frank. She said, I simply cannot build my hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death. I think peace and tranquility will return again. Anna Frank, that German-Dutch girl of Jewish origin, one of the most discussed Jewish victims of the Holocaust. She gained fame after her death with the publication of that diary, the diary of Anna Frank, her Anne Frank, in which she documents her life in hiding from 1942 to 1944 during the German occupation of the Netherlands in World War II. It is one of the world's best known books and has been the basis for several plays and films. I know her diary well. During the first three years of my high school teaching career, I taught her diary as a piece of significant history in my freshman English class. Sharon and I have visited that family hiding place in Amsterdam. We climbed those stairs and it has been carefully and lovingly preserved. And these words have been indel indelibly written in my mind and heart. She said, I simply cannot build my hopes on a foundation of confusion, misery, and death. I think peace and tranquility will return again. Thirteen years old, she wrote that last diary entry, August the 1st. 1944, and three days later, police raided the family's hiding place. Anne and her sister were shipped to a concentration camp, and Anne died there nine months later. Since that time, Anne's diary has been published in 30 languages. And the film made about her finishes with her father, who has found the diary. When he finishes reading it, he says, she puts me to shame. Peace and tranquility, she says, will return again. 
That's our prayer today too, isn't it? Confusion will eventually be gone and peace and tranquility will return again. We need that 13-year-old's wisdom in our time of confusion. Thank you, Anna Frank and Frank. Psalm 71.1 Lord, I put my trust in you. Let me never be put to confusion. James 1, verses 2 through 5. Consider up your joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who generously gives to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Confusion. It is one of those trials that tests our faith. There will be in our lives sometimes when there is spiritual confusion, but it's only by going through the spiritual confusion that we finally come to the understanding of what God wants for us. There are times in our spiritual lives when there is confusion, and the way out of it is not simply to say we should not be confused. It's not a matter of right and wrong, but a matter of God taking us through a way that we temporarily do not understand. That may feel like saying, when we use a map, uh, when we're traveling and we can't figure it out, then the map must be wrong. You ever said that? But maybe it's just because we haven't learned properly how to read the map. But we do have a very readable map, don't we? The Word of God. Psalm 71, 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. The policeman stops for checking speeders on the highway, and after a while he sees his car going very slowly on the highway, and he de decides to pull the car over. When he goes up to the window uh, they, and finds this little old lady sitting behind the wheel, and two elderly women in the back seat who look completely frazzled. Well, do you know how fast you were going, the policeman asks. The woman's face furrows in confusion, but then she smiles. Yes, sir, I was right on the speed limit. The policeman blinks in confusion and says, What? Yes, yes, sir. It says right there, 22 miles on the dot, 22 miles an hour. The old woman said that proudly, and the policeman blinked for a moment before figuring out what she was referring to. Uh, Ma'am, that's the route number, not the speed limit. The officer explains the speed limit is 55 miles per hour. She looked shocked. She said, oh, I'm sorry, I must not have seen the whole sign. It's all right, the officer said um, um, apologetically. Uh, just don't let it happen again. Oh, of course, officer. Then the officer looked in the back seat again and saw the two other women were absolutely frazzled. Are they all right, the officer asked. And the woman behind the wheel chuckled. Well, yes, sir, they're just a bit shocked. We just got off Route I-75. That's an amusing story about confusion. But confusion isn't con amusing. Here is an acronym. I've taken the first letters of the spelling of confusion. C is for cheated. O is for overwhelmed. N is for nervous. F is for frustrated. U is for uncertainty. S is for sorrowful. I is for infuriated. O is for outrage. And N is for negative attitude. Ah, yes. Confusion in our spiritual lives may lead us into very serious situations. We may get confused and misunderstand what God is telling us through His Word. Because perhaps we do not really read 
his word. Then let's take that acronym again. And when we read his word and pray, then with Christ cheated becomes charitable. With Christ overwhelmed becomes overcomer. With Christ nervous becomes new. With Christ frustrated becomes feeling good. And with Christ uncertainty becomes optimism. With Christ sorrow turns into a smile. Christ, with Christ infuriated becomes inspired. And with Christ outrage becomes obedience. And with Christ, a negative attitude becomes a nourishing one. And this happens because, because God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.